Good morning, everyone. We're here for the Thanksgiving service. I'm hoping you're all tuned in by now. I waited a minute or so. It was supposed to start at 941, so I'm not the big techo guy, so I think we hope we're going to do it well. I'd ask you to all to stand for the opening prayer, and then we will proceed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. God, all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless, and your goodness infinite. Today we come before you with gratitude for your kindness. Open our hearts to concern for all of our brothers and sisters so that we may share your gifts in loving service. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I'll do a quick explanation of what we're going to do, and then I'm going to ask the three participants. They're going to be offering their uh, parts as well. We're going to have a simple reading, the first reading from the letter to the Colossians. No response. We'll have that reading, and then we'll have a gospel reading. I will make a few remarks, and then we will talk about thank you and how we're going to do thank yous as a student body. And uh, we'll have some intercessions and a drawing for, we have drawing for three prizes, so we will do that today like we normally do, and some other announcements in that, and then a final closing prayer, which I'll ask you to stand again. So right now you can be seated, and we get to the gospel, just out of respect for the gospel, we'll have you stand, then the rest of the time you can be seated till the very end of the ceremony. So at this time, um, we we're going to have a reading from the letter to Colossians. Okay, so please come forward. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Colossians. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them to get all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Now, if you'd please stand for the gospel, and then we'll be able to be seated after that. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leprous men, who stood at a distance, met him. And they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now, one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to and thank God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At least you know we have something called Lexio groups here at St. Bede, and I've been announcing that, and they've been canceled, and they met again this week. It so happens the very reading that we just had, which is a reading that we have on Thanksgiving, was the one about the ten lepers that are cured. And so we talked a lot about that and got our uh, it, people got to uh, talk about what they thought of that reading and so forth. But I think that one main point that's clear, I think, for all of us is that all of these people receive, but only one thought of giving thanks, and there's a whole reason for all of that. But the point being, we are those people. We are those nine sometimes who take so many things for granted, at least I know I do, and we don't thank God or others. 
And sometimes we're that one, however. Sometimes we're the one we remember to be giving thanks. And hopefully that's what's happening these days now, between now and Thanksgiving and on Thanksgiving Day, and this strange time that we're living in. You know, I find it strange to be here looking out at all these empty chairs. And luckily I have these three lovelies with me, <laughs> Abby and Ben and Wren. So I'm not here totally alone. So, uh, but hopefully you're seeing this on the screen. But what I'd like to talk about a little bit is what we're going to do, a simple activity before the end of this period. This will only go another few minutes, then you'll have some time before this ends and period D begins. But I'd like to talk about thank you and what we can be doing for thank yous and so forth. Um, I decided for myself this year to remind myself how I take things for granted. And uh, I think we're all, you know, if I said, what are you thankful for? And we would say our family, our friend, those kind of those big things that everybody says thanks for. But I think we forget all of the things around us that are so valuable and we don't even pay attention to them or we take them for granted. So I have this beautifully written with my, you can't see from my printing, they can see. But I put this little card on my desk and on November 1st, I started and each day I wrote one thing I am thankful for. And of course, I'm up to number 23. And so I have things, those general things about family and so forth, but I'll, I'll read, I'll just go through quickly and not all of them. I'll read beside, and then I have names of some people specifically, friends of mine and so forth, but I also have the, the food and shelter thing, but I even have COVID-19 pandemic and probably say, well, that's weird. Why would you have, why be thankful for that? And I've kind of looked at it to see what is it about it that's changed my life that's maybe a benefit instead of a negative thing. All right. I had Italy on there because I lived in Italy. I love Italy and I had Italian food. I've had pasta on here. I had Ladd, Illinois because that's where I grew up. So everybody has their own little list. All right. And so what we're going to do, and I think Mr. McGonigal has helped us, he and the ambassadors and the teachers, uh, last week he came to me and said he was going to do this. And I thought that's going to dovetail very well. He had people write down things they're thankful for. And if you're observant, we can't go to our lockers, but you probably notice these little post-it notes all over. And it has more of those kind of things. It has the general, the big ones, I think, on the doors say health and family and food, those general things. But around the building, we have all these little things that we're thankful for as well. <clears throat> and so I learned as a boy to be very thankful. I, I give that credit to my mom and dad, especially my mom. I can think of any, one specific event. I think it must have been in eighth grade. I don't know. You live in a little town, you know, and everybody knows you, at least they did in those days. And it must have been eighth grade graduation. And I got all these little cards, you know, and the little old ladies from LAD would, Ronnie would send me $2 or something. And so I was write, dutifully writing my little thank you notes. And then there were some other cards. And my mom said, why aren't you sending thank you notes to those? And I said, because there was no money. <laughs> there was no money in them, you know. I was practical, and she said, no, but that's Mrs. So-and-so. The big thing in those days, you had to buy the card. It was a big thing just to send you a card. She said, you thank people for those kinds of things. And it's always stuck with me. And so uh, I might have a lot of other vices, but one is I learn to be thankful, and I write lots of thank you notes to people. And so what we're going to do now, and I'm going to watch the clock, and we have another eight minutes or so before you'll begin this, but what I've given your teachers, and if they don't have them, I hope they'll scuttle off and have somebody get them out of their mailbox for them. <clears throat> I have created, beautifully, as I must say, you know, uh, these little thank you papers. And I'm going to ask you, and then we're going to explain it, and all of us are going to give an example. But I'm going to ask you, on here is the, uh, a, a place to write to and from, and write the note, and then you can fold it and print to, whoever that person is, print it. I would like you, what we're going to want us to do today is to write a thank you note to somebody in the St. Bede community. And what I mean is that it's basically, for the most part, on campus. It included coaches off campus. But I don't want to alumni, former students, anything like that. People who are here. And it's going to be a note to a teacher, a fellow student, a worker here, somebody in the cafeteria, business office. It could be anybody on campus. But I want you to send a note to thank them. And if you can, you'll have 10 minutes to do this, and I hope you'll do it in your class. You write that out, and if you do me a favor, if you make sure on the two, when you fold it in half, you print it, so I have no problem reading it. 
and i'm going to ask you i'll tell you we're going to do we're going to get those delivered tomorrow to people but i want to talk more about what we're going to do on the thank you first and then i'll talk about the practicalities all right so uh, i'm going to let the students go first and then i'm going to say mine but i'm going to give ask each of them to think of somebody that they're thankful for and they can either tell you the name or not it makes no difference but I want the point being, we don't want this deep, it doesn't have to be a deep, deep thing, but we don't want some little, you know, thanks for the 20 cents you gave me to buy a Coke two years ago or something like that. Something a little more tangible, all right? And so what we're going to do is, uh, Ben's going to start first. I think he said he wanted to start first. They will come up and give their example. I'll give mine. Then I'll give the uh, practicality of how we're going to get these turned in. And then we'll have some more intercessions, prayers, and so forth, and then we will end, okay? So at this time, I'd ask Ben to come forward, and he can give his example. I'm thankful for a certain... Oh, take this off. I am thankful for a certain teacher. Whenever I enter their class, they always have a smile on their face. They are kind, even on their worst days. I am thankful that they have given the student body and I a chance to interact and care for each other. Thank you. I am thankful for Mr. Hancock for always having the brightest and most welcoming smile every day at the St. Bede front door. He makes everyone, everyone's day just a little bit brighter. So thank you, Mr. Hancock. I am thankful for Ms. Prushinsky because every time we enter our class, she always makes sure to check on us and make sure that we are having an awesome day. I think I'll be writing more than one, but I, <clears throat> the one I want to, uh, it's a student. Uh, this student, maybe that's another thing, maybe during this time I'm noticing more, but this student is a, a junior. <clears throat> And this student, I won't say it's a boy or girl, but it's a student who, ever since they've been here, every time I, you, those who know me in other years, you see me more often, but I'm in the hallway, that student every time comes by, I don't care what kind of day it is, perks me up. I can't believe somebody can always be that upbeat to other people. Now, maybe they're not going having the greatest day, but never let it affect it. And so I'm very impressed with that. It's a hard thing to do, and I think I, I want that person to know I really appreciate that, and I hope they will continue. So I've got a lot of other ones I could do. We don't need any more examples. I think we had some great examples here of what I'd like you to do. So what we're going to do now, I'll give you the practical part, and then we'll do the ending. I would, your teachers have um, these papers. I think I gave enough out, especially because a number of people are remote, but I gave enough to the period D teachers. I think you'll have enough. But I'd like you in a few moments to take time and write a note. Specifically, go outside yourself and write something. There's no, there's no reason everybody in the school is not going to get one. That's not the point. The point is us doing the thanking, not who's getting thanked at this point. And what I'd like you to do is, once you've written them, if you have them done, you can just give them to your period D teacher and they can get them to me. Otherwise, sometime today, I'd like you to get it to uh, get the paper to uh, Mrs. Uh, Plankenhort in the office, in the school office, or to me, to my mailbox or something, so that tomorrow I can get those distributed. I think that's clear, right? Got the big, okay. So if everybody would do that. Now, if there's not enough of these beautifully runoff colored papers that I did. You can always take a piece of paper and write on it and do the same thing if you want other ones. But if there's extra ones in your classroom and you want them, you're more than welcome to have it. So uh, that's what we're going to do. This year it's more, it's a whole different thing, but I think we can get so focused on ourselves during this pandemic that we forget so many good things that are going on around us all the time that we are thankful for. Now, as I said, there have been little post-it notes uh, all over the school about little strange things that people are thankful for. So I've, we've got intercessions today, and two students are going to now do the intercessions, and it'll be kind of almost funny somewhat, some of the things we're thanking for, but it'll make us think again how we take some things for granted all of the time. So I would ask them to do the intercessions. We'll have a final announcement, a prayer in the end. Okay, so please come forward. For the smell of new rain, for pumpkins, for the aroma of homemade bread, for cotton candy, for funny looking animals like giraffes and zebras and human beings, let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the smell of the fall in the air, for paychecks and smoked ribs, for the intricate designs of window frost, and for ice cubes and ice cream, let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For clean sheets and peanut butter, and iPods and computers, for vacation and seatbelts, for escalators, and for red balloons. For parents and siblings and friends, let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For first romances and second romances, for eyes to see colors and ears to hear music and feet to dance, for dissenters and the right to dissent, for pine trees and roses, for newspapers and sandals and frogs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. So some of those are funny, but I think it also shows that I could have a list and go do some. I did my 23 so far. All of us could come up with hundreds of things. You guys are probably on your 25th romance by now, but that we just had first and second or third or whatever it was there. So I think we have a lot to be thankful for. And so I'm going to have two announcements now, and then we're going to do a drawing and a final prayer, and then I'll have you time to get busy. You'll have about 10 minutes if we work this out right. You'll have 10 minutes to write some notes and get them in. All right, the announcements are, I can see people have been bringing food in. I hope we can do a final thrust here before tomorrow is our last day, and we won't be back uh, the week after Thanksgiving. So I want to make a run to the food pantry. So if we could, if you think about it, and people are hungry at this time, uh, bring that food in tomorrow. It would be re very much appreciated. I keep forgetting to take this off. Also, for your, to your religion teachers tomorrow, I'm going to leave just a few copies in their mailbox and ask them to have them available. We've done this before, the uh, reverse advent calendar. So instead of getting something, you're going to put something in a box every day. And those who want to participate can take one of these papers. If you've done it before, you know what I'm talking about. You just keep a box at home. And you could do it all at once, but I think it's more significant if you do one thing a day. You put a food item in there uh, each day. And at the end of Advent, you would have a box of 20-some items that we will then, after Christmas break, we can get to the food pantry. Um, uh, as I said, you don't have to do the exact things that are on there, but it'll give you an idea of, of a way to do that. Kind of. And now, by the way, um, we, Thanksgiving is Thursday. On Sunday, we start Advent. Advent is those weeks before Christmas. So we're actually on the road already to do that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this container, and I'm going to go around. There's going to be three. If they'd each take a name out and then hold it until we get and then we'll have them come up and announce who the person is. Uh, by the way, if and any of the winners is remote, We'll find that out and make sure you get your prize if you can show your card. Reach down in there too. So just hold it until you get them all have your time. Some of these people might be in China. Who knows? You know. <laughs> but we'll just do the three we get, and then we'll work from there. If we have to make some substitutions, we'll do so. Okay, if you come up one up time and just say the name out loud so we know who it is, please. Josie Zhu. Hunter Savage. Olivia Orteza. Okay, hey, thank you. If I'd ask you now if you'd please stand, we'll have a final hymn and a uh, uh, final hymn, no hymn, I'm not singing for you, we'll have a final prayer and a blessing, okay? <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord God, today in our prayer of thanksgiving, we recall the depths of your love for every one of us and have been reminded of our negligence toward others. Help us to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the goods of time and eternity. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And thank you to Abby, Ben, and Wren for your help. And now the blessing of mighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain forever. Amen. Go in peace, everybody. Hope you get some good thank you notes written. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I can see just get, leave, give me those, I won't remember because my brain is. Oops. Whoops. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, you can blow those out.
Okay, thank you. Pick up there's your paper. Thank you. And I can get this other stuff taken care of. Thank you. I think so. Well, no, we all want you to go over and do your little note. I want you to go over and do your little note. Like I said, if you want to do more than one, you can. Just if they don't have extra papers, just grab some papers. Anytime. Yeah. I actually like doing it. I do too. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>